Hello everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. So we just got done doing the video on the PC build and we got some good feedback from that. A lot of people like to see the comparison of Fusion 360 performance and how it affected the hardware utilization. And it basically just gave a good idea of, you know, if I buy this hardware, it's going to use this much percentage of it. So it kind of gave people a feel for how much PC they need to get good performance out of Fusion. And as we kind of shown, the PC we built gave us way more computer than we really needed for Fusion, um, but I'm absolutely loving it for video editing. I'm able to preview and watch the videos before I render them for real, which is saving me a lot of time. It's immense, so that's really cool. So I'm trying to get my video quality up, make better quality videos and better content for everybody. And one of the things I wanted to address is this problem right here. So I do some videos in my office on the PC, and we're gonna do another one today for the Fusion 360 post-processor again. And I always look like I'm dead, just because the lighting sucks. Now when I built my office, I built it to work on computers and then also to do projects and electronics and soldering and you know stuff like that. So I have two forms of lighting. One is I've got lights on the far peripheral so I don't get any glare on my monitors. And then two, I got a lot of light from way up top straight down so that I can have light on the project that I'm working on. In either case, I either get full shadow, which looks like I'm dead, or I get monitor light, which makes me look marginally dead. So I stopped at my local big box store and I bought some under-counter LED strip lighting, and this works surprisingly well. So there's that. So now I'm pretty well lit, and it was pretty budget-friendly. And all I did is I put them around the monitor and I put a piece of copy paper over them to diffuse them so that they're not blinding me. And uh, I think this is uh, going to work out good. So give me some feedback. Let me know if you like this. If it, uh, if it helps, you know, makes the videos a little bit better. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll use this. So let's get right into this video. This is going to be another Fusion 360 post-processor video. This was a video that was specifically requested by one of our viewers a little bit ago. So I'm trying to get these viewer request videos done for, for everybody. And we did a video a while ago on how to move the coolant on location. So the default location for turning coolant on is before the first initial move. So if your tool changer is way up high in the machine, it's going to turn coolant on way up high in the machine and turn the spindle on so it slings coolant everywhere. Now if you're like me trying to make a video or if you just want to try to keep your machine clean, the coolant gets all up here instead of down at our work part. So I made a video to show you how to delay the turning on of the coolant until you're at the first retract height which is just above the part. Now this works for some people, but it doesn't work for others. It depends on how long it takes your coolant to actually turn on. My machine has a check valve, so when I call for my coolant on, it comes on instantly. So this works out for me. It keeps the machine clean, and I don't enter in my cut without having coolant. My coolant's already on and there. Works out great when I'm trying to do the videos. It kind of limits how much coolant gets splashed up at the upper portions of the glass where I keep this camera. So that being said, somebody asked, well, gee, Tim, the coolant doesn't turn off until it gets back up to the top at the home position. Can you show us how to move the coolant off location so that it will turn off at the first retract height so that it turns off down near the part rather than moving up to home and then turning off? So let's do that and let's dive right into it. So I've got Fusion 360 opened on the left with our little test part that we've been using for all these videos. And I've got the generic Fanuc, or Fanuc, sorry, post processor on the right. And we're going to go through this step by step from the very beginning. So you kind of see how I go about tackling one of these requests that I get for doing post processor mods. So if we post process this file,
here it is. We've got two operations, a facing operation and then a chamfering operation. Now if you look here, we have M5 here, which is turn the spindle off, then a G28, which is move home, and then some other codes, and then down here is the M9. Now M9 is what turns our coolant off. So the coolant gets turned off after the home move. What we'd like to see in this case is we'd like to move this M9 to in between M5 and G28. We want it to land right there. So that's the goal uh, of this exercise. So let's go look at the post processor and then where do we start? Well the first thing that I try to do is I pull up the search and I'll actually type in this code right here M09. So let's try to search the post processor for M09 and we get nothing. Now sometimes you'll actually find the piece of code you're looking for but a lot of the times it uses an M format command and then the M code. So let's try 09. And again, we get nothing. Now if you just try to search the file for 9, you're going to get a lot of hits. I'm sure there's a lot of character 9s throughout this whole file. So that's going to be hard to search. So then what's the next step that we can do to try to narrow in on this specific part of the code that we're looking for? Well, a lot of software programmers will use variable names that are representative of what they're trying to do. So in this case, we're dealing with coolant. So then the next thing that I would search for would be coolant. And hey, we got a hit. So now we see there is a function called onCommand, and it has an input variable of command coolant off. So then this onCommand function must be handling the coolant calls. So let's look for this function. So we're going to search through until we actually find the function. So there's the function of on command, and then it's got a command for an input. The next line from that is switch. Now a switch command will basically interpret the input and then it has cases for each one of those inputs, okay? So you can see we've got command coolant off, command coolant on, command stop. So we've got all these different cases. So now we're, con we're, we're interested in the coolant cases. So let's look specifically at these, and both of these have another function that's called set coolant. So let's find its function. So we'll search for set coolant. So here we have the function set coolant. Okay, and I was at very able very easily and quickly able to zero in on this function just by searching through and kind of using some logical names, right? So let's kind of look at this function real quick. We've got some if statements. So if is probe operation. So is probe operation is going to be a variable that says whether or not we're probing. So if we're probing, we don't want to turn the coolant on, right? No reason to wash down our probe. Then the next one is if coolant is equal to current coolant mode, do nothing, just return out of this function. So this is in there to eliminate repetitive codes. So if you have a whole bunch of cases in, this, in the post processor that wants to turn the coolant off, rather than putting in a whole bunch of M9s needlessly, it's only going to put M9 once, and then every time it calls this function again, it's going to say, oh, the coolant's already off, I don't need to do anything. Then the next line is, if coolant equals coolant off, do this. So this is write block, which is going to output something to the file, M format, which is going to format an M code, and then there's a switch in here that says if the current coolant mode equals coolant through tool, do an 80, M89, if not, do an M9. So this line in the post processor is what is exactly responsible for generating this line of G code in your output file. Okay? So now we drilled into the very bottom of the code where it actually outputs the file. But we're really not interested in this. What we're interested in is seeing where the coolant gets turned off. So as we back out of this, we can go back and look for that command coolant off that we saw previously in this switch case for the on command. 
and let's look for command coolant off. So we're going to search through the file and we found it here. So here is on command, command coolant off. So this is where the coolant is turned off in one spot. Now notice that this is on the function on close. So on close only gets called at the very end of the file when everything is done. So if we look back at our file, we should see at the very bottom an M9 and then followed by a G28 and G91. So that is what we've got here. Now it's funny, in the on close, they turn the coolant off before they went home. In between sections, they go home and then turn the coolant off. Eh, don't know why. But let's fix that. So we'll scroll back up to the top of our file. Remember, we're trying to move this to here. So let's keep searching for our command coolant off. So here's another one. And if we look up a little bit, we'll see if insert tool call. So insert tool call is, are we changing tools? So now we're zeroing in on the correct area of this post processor that we want to work with it. So let's scroll up a little bit and see what function we're in. So we're going to look for a function tag. So here's function on section. Okay. So on section is the very first piece of code or section that it's called every time you change operations. So the facing operation, that's a section. The, the 2D chamfer uh, operation, that is also considered a section. So in between each one of these, it calls this on section function. So now we're in the right spot. Now what we have to be careful of, remember we're looking at this line here, what we have to be careful of is that just because we're still in this first uh, section here doesn't mean that we're necessarily, you know, in that same global thing in the, in the post processor. This G17 is the last piece of this section. This code here is actually a member of the next section. And this is just a methodology that um, the people that at Autodesk that write these post processors have chosen and there's two ways you can do this. Uh, method A would be at the end of this section look up of what the next section's doing and if the next section needs a tool change we would add these lines in or the way that Autodesk has coded it in most cases that I've seen is on the next section they look and see is a tool change necessary then and then they'll add these lines at the end of the previous section when they start the new section. So that's how this post processor is coded. Okay, so just because that these lines are up here associated with this toolpath, you know, via these comments, doesn't mean it's associated with this, this uh, facing operation section. It's actually these are associated with this next section. Okay, so what does that mean we want to do? Well, let's search up in the code a little bit more until we find these operations of turning off the spindle and going home. So we found where the coolant gets turned off, so this is the piece that calls the subroutines that generates this code. Let's scroll up a little bit. Okay. So if properties show notes, if has parameter, operation comment, we're going to write a comment. So that is what's writing this. So we're getting closer. So then we're going to write a line that's blank. So that's our blank line that just does a carriage return, just makes it a little bit easier for you and me to read. Then we come up here, it says retract a safe plane. Oh, I see a G format 28, G incremental absolute model, uh, modal mold, G91, and then a Z. Well, what do we got here? G28, 91, and Z. Okay. So now we're getting even closer, and then we see a G90, and then we see a disable length compensation. That's your G49 that you see here and here. So here and here. So now let's scroll up a little bit farther. Now we see stop spindle. So here's our command stop spindle. It uses the same on command function here. So now we've found the piece of the section of code that lies between here and here. Okay? So now that we located where we want to put our new command, now it's a question of what do we want to put here? Well, we already found a little bit farther down where it turns the coolant off normally. Let's just copy that line, and then we'll come up here, and then we'll paste it in. 
make it look pretty. There we go. So now we're going to stop our spindle, turn our coolant off, and then retract to the safe plane. So that's exactly what we said we want to do. Now we're not going to delete the on coolant or uh, coolant off command down here. We're just going to leave that one in there for belts and suspenders. So watch what happens now when we save this file. We'll save this, and then we're going to reprocess our post. Oh, hold on, we got to select everybody. Okay, so now looking at the file, you can see that we stopped the spindle, we turned the coolant off, and then we went home. So we got exactly what we were looking for. But then if you look down here, there's no repetition of the M9. And that is again because that subroutine that does the coolant off will recognize that, hey, I already turned it off once, I don't need to do it again here even though I have another call that's asking me to do it. Okay, so we don't have to remove the old one, we can just add in an additional one and it will put in the M9 uh, where we need it. So that's going to wrap up this uh, Fusion Post Processor video and that will allow you to turn your coolant off before your home move, maybe keep your machine a little bit cleaner uh, if you so choose, and uh, you know, there you go. So if you have some other Fusion Post Processor questions or videos that you'd like to see, uh, please send me an email or leave some comments below. I try to read the comments as best I can and, re and respond to them. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, forgot to turn on the screen capture the first time. The second time the screen capture was set up so that it generated a 4 gigabyte file, which is the max limit for my screen capture software, so that one wasn't usable. But hey, third time's a charm on this one. <laughs>